What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and Twin Motion tutorial for you. So I'm continuing my series on Twin Motion. Remember that this series is a partnership with Epic Games to get the word out that Twin Motion is still free through the end of November. So make sure you go download a copy of this. The copy that you download is yours to keep. This is a really great way to get in on real time rendering without having any additional costs associated with that. So I recommend everyone follows the link in the notes down below and goes and downloads Twin Motion. So in this video, I wanted to talk a little bit more about setting up your materials inside of Twin Motion. In the last video, we talked about lighting. The other thing that's going to be really important for your for your renderings to look better is for you to have better materials inside of your renderings. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so to start off, model credit for this model is the Pedregal House Garza Iga Architectos. So just search for this inside of the 3D warehouse. This model is from Andy Didich, and uh, you can download this and follow along. And what I've done in this model is I've gone through and I've uh, removed out all of the different trees and the context car model, because we're gonna replace those inside of Twin Motion. And then all we're gonna do is we're just gonna export this using the direct link extension. So if you remember the direct link extension allows you to send this directly over to Twin Motion. So one thing I do recommend, especially when working with materials, is make sure you click on this settings button and you set your collapse to none rather than by material. So if you collapse by material, instead of you having your, uh, your uh, outliner on the right hand side of the page showing all the different model pieces, those will just show up as materials. I, I just find that to be a little bit harder to edit. So you Usually I set my collapse to none. Then I also check these boxes for optimize model and fix UV and texture. And then once you're done with that, click on this button right here to see in twin motion. And that'll pop this model up in twin motion. And so I've already made some changes in here. So I've gone through and I've added a few lights right here and then I've added trees in my background and a little bit of grass in the foreground. So for today's video, we're gonna get a shot of this house um, from this kind of angle. So just enough to kind of fill in the details and not have anything like super low poly like glaring in the foreground. But really what I wanna talk about is how to set up your materials inside of a twin motion rendering. So usually what I do when I bring something in from SketchUp to Twin Motion is I start by stripping out the context models because usually you can find better context models inside of Twin Motion's library. Um, I add things like the grass in the background, but then I also swap out the materials. And the reason I swap out the materials is because usually if you use SketchUp's default materials, they're just kind of low resolution. Um, they don't, they're not super detailed. There's a couple in there that I feel like look pretty good, but for the most part you're gonna find better materials in your material library inside of twin motion over here so the other thing we'll talk about a little bit later is that these materials um, or materials that you create custom can have different maps that can create different effects inside of these materials as well so to start off let's look at editing an existing material that comes over so for now I want to take a look at this concrete wall material that's on this wall that came in directly from SketchUp and so for now, let's just take a look at if we just wanted to edit this material in place, how we would do that. So the way that we would do that is there's a material picker tool that you can find in here that you can use in order to select materials. So you can see how as I go through and I click on different materials, I'm getting different materials selected down here in my options down below. And then I can come in here and I can edit all of those different materials using these settings down below. So to start off, we're going to go ahead and we're going to edit this wall texture, this concrete wall texture. So you can see how when you select a material like this wall, there's a number of different options down here for things that you can change and adjust. So for example, um, there's a little slider in here for reflection. But you can see how if I turn this reflection slider up, I get more light reflecting off of this material. So you can use this to set how much light is being reflected with your materials that you have selected. You can also come in here and load in like a gloss map 
or a um, or a roughness map in here as well. If, if you have a map that sets the way things reflect, um, you can load that in here as well. But you can adjust the reflections. You can also adjust the scale and sizing. So you can see how I can adjust the size of my selected material by dragging the slider up and down. And so one mistake I see a lot of beginners make is they their mapping is really bad, meaning that their materials are kind of tiled like this. You can see how um, if you turn the scale way down on this you're not really getting the detail of the material in here but you can use this to adjust this so that this material size is proper and set to the real world using this scale bar. So in addition to being able to adjust your material scale, so the size of the material, you can also set how this sits on your faces by clicking on this more button. So you can see how the more button has a few different options in here. Um, if you click and mess around with these, you can see how you can set the X and Y orientation of this material, meaning you can move it and position it on your faces so that it looks better. So like for example, this material has uh, some of these these old form saver images on here you can adjust this so those are kind of out of your frame if you want this to be a cleaner material or if you just want that like uh, centered or something like that you can use the move tool in order to adjust that and notice that when I adjust this this is adjusting the mapping for this material everywhere inside of twin motion so you just need to be aware that uh, when you make a change to a material it's changing all the different instances of the material in here so you can also rotate the material. So if you wanted this to be rotated like 90 degrees or something, you could type in a value of 90 degrees and you could adjust this so that it's rotated. So you can use this to adjust the orientation of those materials in addition to the actual location. And then I'm not gonna talk too much about this, but you can also animate materials. So you can see how you can set your speed X and Y over here if you want like a moving water or something like that. For this, we're not really gonna do that right now, but you can adjust the placement of your materials using the scale options. So weather is going to affect if your material is affected by the weather settings inside of Twin Motion. So for example, if we go in here and we change this so that it's a snowy scene like this, and then we were to select this asphalt material, if I turn the weather off, you can see how this doesn't get snow on the material. If I turn the weather on, it does. So you can adjust if things are affected by the weather or not um, by using this setting right here. So as a general rule, I like to leave that set to on, especially if I've got things like paving where I'm going to like fake a reflective effect using the uh, wet pavement effect. We can talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, but I usually leave that set to on. And then inside of your settings, there's some more advanced things in here like your metallicness. So you can set if something as metal. And usually that's either 100% or 0%. Um, so you can set the metallicness. You can also set the bump. And so you can see how if I click and drag this bump all the way up right now, this is generating a bump material on, on the front of this face. The, the weird thing about this is if you click on this, these, these all come with this like preset crumpled material in here. And the crumpled material to me, it doesn't really make sense for that to be loaded in with every material because it doesn't really fit with the material. Um, so if you are going to do more of a bump effect, you're probably going to want to load a map in. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, and then we can also, you can make this glow or emissive if you want to. So you can adjust this so that the material um, emits light. So usually that's going to be more for like a lighting or something like that. So generally speaking, 95% of the time you're going to be using these, these uh, settings over here. So that's how you can adjust your materials that are inside of your model. Um, and then now let's talk a little bit about replacing materials because you're going to do a lot of replacing materials when you're bringing them in from an external source. So the way that you replace materials is you just come over into the materials section of your library. So just go into your library and click on the button for materials. There's a bunch of options for built-in materials in here that you can use in order to add materials to your rendering. So for example, let's say we wanted to replace this concrete material that we've been looking at. You could just go into the concrete settings and you could just find a material that you like. So you could just take one of these and just drag this and put it on this face. And notice that when you do this, this is replacing this material everywhere. So everywhere I had that concrete material applied, it's now been applied with this new material. So you can see how as I drag these different materials in, it's replacing everywhere where I had this concrete. Um, with the new concrete material in here.
And so same thing as before, you can adjust the scale and the sizing of these different materials using the sliders down below. So you can adjust the twin motion materials in the same way that we did our SketchUp materials. And so we can also come in here and replace like this with a metal panel or something like that. You can see how replacing these materials is really easy. You just click and drag this in. And so you could also drag in like a different concrete material. Um, there's some ground materials in here actually. So things that are either like man-made, so things like asphalt or concrete, as well as like cobblestones and stuff like that. And so one thing about that right now is let's say we wanted to replace this material with like a cobblestone or something like that. Well, one of the things about that is right now, if you click and drag this in, you can see how this ground is the same material as the walls in here. So if I click and drag a cobblestone in here, you can see how that's replacing my cobblestone material on the ground, but also the one on the walls and on the roof, which while this is an interesting effect, it's not really realistic. So what you can do is there's an option in here where you can instead of doing a replace material you can click and hold this and let up on the option for apply to object instead when you do that you can now bring materials in and place them on individual objects instead of instead of replacing that material everywhere so let's say we wanted this to be like an asphalt pavement or something like that so you could click and drag that asphalt material in here um, with this set and only replace it where this car is going to be parking rather than everywhere. So there's also an option in here for adjusting the way that the materials map. You're generally not going to mess around with those unless your UV mapping on an object is kind of messed up. So you can try these if your materials just aren't mapping properly to things you brought in from exterior sources. And so the last thing I want to talk about is bringing in custom materials. So this shows you how to use objects that are already inside of this, or this shows you how to use materials that are already inside of this library, but we're also going to want to be able to bring in materials um, from external sources. So on my site, I use a lot of uh, materials from the website Polygon. Um, there's a bunch of other mater uh, material websites as well. So SketchUp Texture Club is another one. Um, I will try to remember to link to a video about some of those resources, but um, one of the benefits of bringing in those exterior materials is they come in with different maps. And so those material maps are going to be something that you can load in to make your materials more realistic. So let's say, for example, that we wanted to replace this asphalt material in the road with an external material. So what we could do is we could select this material, but then um, there's an option in here. If you click on this button, um, this will take you back to your material material list which basically shows you all of the materials that have been applied inside of your rendering. Well what you can do is you can click on this plus button right here to add a new material. And so when you click on that new material you can select that and then click on this button right here to get into your material editing. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to edit this material. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to load our texture material in. So that's going to be our texture image um, that's going to make up the image that's applied to this face. So to do that, you're going to come in here and click on the button for more. And you can see how right here there's a slot where you can load in a map. And so I'm just going to click on this and go click on open. And in this case, I'm using a road material that I've downloaded from Polygon. So it's got all of the different maps that you would expect to see your color map, uh, your displacement normal maps, your front, your gloss map, so things like that. And uh, so what we want to do is we want to find the color map. The color map is the map that makes up the actual material here. And so we're just going to double click on this to bring this in. So you can see how now this material has associated this image that we brought in with the material. So now I can click and drag this. You can see how I can place this on the ground right here. And so obviously there's some things that need to be changed. So first of all, your scale needs to go up because we need to fit this so that it fits right across the street. So I'm just gonna click and drag this up a little bit. And then under my more settings, I'm gonna adjust my X and Y until this is kind of centered on this road. So you can see how I can adjust this really easily using these settings. So that road material has now been brought in and applied to this face. And so you can adjust your scale a little bit more if you want to, that's something you just kind of play around with, but I also want to load in a bump map. 
And so if you remember, a bump map is going to be a map that's going to adjust how bumpy a material looks. So if I come in here and click on the button for open, we're just gonna find, in this case, it's actually a normal map, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna bring that in. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna adjust how bumpy this road is. So the way it's gonna simulate bumpiness in the way that the light is reflected off of this road. And so we do need to remember to come in here and turn that bump setting up a little bit and a lot of the time it's a fairly subtle effect depending on uh, depending on what material you're working with but that's going to make that look a little bit bumpier so let's say we were to bring in like a different metal panel material so we'll do the same thing just click here click the plus button so i'm going to bring in a color map for this material then I'm going to click and drag this to apply this to this face. And so you can see how this is a fairly dark material. But then I'm also going to come in here and I'm going to load in a gloss map that'll show it where the reflections need to be. So this is going to be a gloss map right here. Then I'm also going to load in a bump map or a normal map. So and then once you have your materials loaded in the way that you like them, first of all, you can click on this button right here and you can rename them. So I would rename this one something like dark metal panel polygon. And you can actually right click on this. And if you have a material that you like that you want to use in the future, you can just click on this button for add to user library. And so what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to save this material to your library over here on the left. And so when you click on that, you're going to be able to find that by going into your library under user library, you can see how that metal panel material was brought in here. And then you can put that in a folder. So you can add a folder in here. And so like, for example, I'm going to drag this into my metal panels folder. So you can see how I have another one for like a stone material that I've brought in here before. So what you could do is you can start building out a library of both context models and also um, materials that you can use in future renderings. And so now let's go ahead and let's render this out. So I've already kind of set this up using the settings we talked about last week. So I've set up some lights in here. I've got a couple, uh, I've got a couple omnidirectional lights that I've set up inside of these rooms just to give them a little bit of a glow. And then I've also set these up as spotlights in here. But one thing that I'm not seeing right now is I am not seeing any lighting coming from the light sources right here. And so what I want to do for these, and we're going to make this very simple for right now, is I just want to go find one of my neons materials. So you can see how, and there's a better way to do this, but for the sake of speed, I'm just going to replace these right here. What I'm doing is I'm just replacing these lights with a material that emits light. So if you go into your materials under neons, there's a couple materials that are already set up as emitter materials. So I'm just dragging these on here. Well, you can see how what these are doing is these are actually simulating the emission of light. So when I uh, go back into my rendering, I'm gonna have some light sources in here so these look a little bit more realistic. And so we're gonna get, go ahead and we're gonna call this good for right now. So I'm just gonna go back to the scene that I set up. So I'm just going to go down into my export settings. I'm gonna find the option for my image 01 and I'm just gonna export this to my folder. And so if I bring this image up, you can see how this is rendering out my materials. And I have added a little bit of a uh, post weather um, wetness to the pavement just to get a little bit more reflection off of this material. But you can see how we were able to swap out these materials and create our render really quickly. So that should give you a pretty good idea of how to adjust materials inside of Twin Motion. There's some lighting things I may go back and tweak with this rendering, but you can see how you can use the tools built in to create custom materials and also use that library to add realistic materials to your renderings really quickly. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Have you been using Twin Motion? How do you like it so far? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.